All right, guys, I'm going to give you a little demo here how to run through the browser on Honeycomb. This is just the stock browser running on the Galaxy Tab. We'll run through the settings menu here. So you got your options, new tab, incognito tab. If you don't know, that's what allows you to browse without having any uh, cookies stored or saving any part of your history or even cash from what I know. Uh, find on page is going to let you look for a specific word, so I'll look for fail. So I know that's right in the title. It's going to highlight that word. If you have multiple matches, you'll see that up here, and you'll be able to browse through those matches by clicking back and forth. Share page, pretty standard, but if you're new to Android, then this will be pretty new to you. Um, you can instantly share this page by clicking the share page button. It's pretty straightforward from there though. Um, if you select Bluetooth, it'll try to let you Bluetooth transfer it to another Bluetooth device that it's hooked up to. I uh, have phone to Chrome installed. It's obviously the reverse of Chrome to phone. This one uses Dropbox and uh, adds an extension into Chrome in this case, but I think they probably have one for Firefox as well. And then Plume's my Twitter agent on here, Twitter client. Uh, Save page actually just lets you save the HTML page. Page info is just going to show you pretty boring stuff. Um, downloads, that's what you downloaded. Settings menu. Uh, set your home page. Sync with Google Chrome. So if you use Chrome and if you don't, I suggest you do if only for this purpose. It's going to sync your bookmarks. It's going to sync your passwords, your user names for websites. It's going to try and basically sync as much as it can to your Google account through Chrome. So when you add a bookmark on Google Chrome, it's going to add a bookmark to your phone. I'll show you there's actually some bugs uh, with that that I can show you. Basically what it does is it rearranges your bookmarks. So for instance, if I had um, Gmail as my first bookmark in my bookmarks toolbar, and then a folder after that, let's say personal stuff, if I open up Gmail on my tablet, it ends up pushing the Gmail to the back of the line behind that folder. It probably doesn't make sense when I'm explaining it, but it's, it's definitely a bug. Form autofill, if you use this just like in Google Chrome, you can set up your name. Uh, you've got some personal information, but basically it's gonna set up your name, address, phone number, email address, and a whole bunch of information that gets pretty repetitive when you constantly have to enter it. Privacy and security, this is where you're going to be able to clear your cache, clear your history, show security warnings. I'll leave that unchecked because I tend to uh, hit OK every time they come up anyway. Accept cookies, clear cookie data, remember form data, so usernames on sites that you logged into, it's going to remember that if you check that off. If you uncheck it, uh, obviously it will not remember it. Basically unchecking that, unchecking uh, accept cookies. And setting your browser history to be zero is essentially what incognito windows are. Enable location, that's pretty convenient for search results click and remember passwords. In the advanced menu, this does allow you to set your search engine. I think most of us are probably going to be using Google, but you do have Yahoo and Bing as other options. Open in background, I like that because if I'm browsing a page, for instance, uh, let's say Reddit and I'm opening multiple tabs, I kind of want to just browse that web page, hold long press on a link, open it in the background. So maybe by the time I'm done with that page, I have five links opened up top, five tabs opened up top and I can kind of seamlessly just go through one by one. Um, enable JavaScript. You want to have that checked off. Plugins. The only plugin right now that's really this applies to is going to be Adobe Flash Player. If you have it set to always on, which is going to be the default, every time a flash object is on a page, it's going to automatically load, which, you know, unfortunately does really lag your browser if you have flash loading up. So I set it to on demand, um, in which case you'll see a big square with a, a downward arrow inside that object, and then you just tap on the arrow and the flash object, it actually loads flash for the entire page. But then you don't always have flash running. You can also turn it to always off. Uh, the other stuff is pretty straightforward except open pages in overview. 
Basically, with this checked off, it's going to open the page fully unzoomed. If it was unchecked, it's going to zoom into the top left corner of the page, for example, uh, as if you had double tapped up here. I like to leave it checked so that if what I want to start seeing is over here, I can double tap right over there right away. Block pop-ups, uh, auto-fit pages, you should have that checked off. That's what's going to help you align your text when you zoom in. Load images and reset to de the default. Here's one tip for you guys. If you go into your uh, menu bar, actually before I get to that one, once you start scrolling, your address bar goes away. Easy way to get that back at any time is just to hit this arrow up here. So there's always going to be an arrow next to the name of the page. You can click that. You can back forward, reload. Uh, if the page is loading, that'd be a stop. I'm going to show you that. X is going to stop the loading. We also have star to uh, instantly add to bookmark. Search and open up your bookmarks by clicking this um, ribbon symbol. But if you go in here and you type about colon d-e-b-u-g about colon debug one word no spaces press go now you're going to be you're going to have access to a debug menu while i don't understand everything that this menu presents i do know that it allows you to change your ua string to set it to a desktop so that every web page is going to view your um view your device as if it was a desktop browser so then you don't get stuck featuring or uh, viewing mobile websites on a tablet. So I just set it to desktop. Just recently learned if you set it to iPad, some sites will then provide you with HTML5 um, optimized pages. So that could be nice, but I prefer desktop. My experience with iPad, you still get a lot of mobile web pages. So I don't really want to take my chance on that. Um, Ah, visual indicators. That's actually pretty nice. I, I like visual indicator. That's what's going to, well, I guess it's, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's not what I expected. All right. We're going to turn that off. That's why I don't like to mess around in the debug menu because I got no freaking clue what I'm doing. Um, hopefully some more educated people than I can explain that to you later. And then now you got this debug menu in here. If you kind of want to if you want to get rid of that debug menu you just type about debug in the browser again and that'll get you back to your normal menu but it will leave the ua string as desktop so that's it just a quick overview of the honeycomb browser hopefully that helped you guys out and stay tuned i'll have some more videos coming thanks